everybody, Rachel here with Give Butter again. Thanks for joining for another success story from the Give Butter community. Today, we're highlighting Americans Against Language Barriers. Recently, this new organization has been using Give Butter Collect Forms to gather fees for service. So far, they've trained and qualified about 150 medical interpreters since they launched last May and are projected to train at least 450 in the next 12 months, if everything goes according to plan. I have Kevin here with me to share how they've made these forms so successfully integrated, as well as you know them, you love them, tips, tricks, and lessons learned along the way. Kevin, thanks so much for joining us and sharing your success with us. Thanks for having me. So to start, um, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and a little bit more about what your organization does? Sure. Uh, my name is Kevin. I'm one of the directors and co-founders of Americans Against Language Barriers, and we're a 501c3 nonprofit based in Chicago. Um, we, really, what, really what we do is that we try to uh, improve the quality of care for people with language barriers, limited English proficiency and deafness or hard of hearing. Um, and the way we do that right now is that we train people to become medical interpreters. And we're gonna expand beyond that, of course, but this is really how we bring in revenue to the nonprofit so it can be sustainable. Um, and when we train people to be medical interpreters, uh, this is a profession. So once they finish our training, they're able to work uh, as spoken language medical interpreters and all languages. We train students in all languages and the training is entirely online. And so um, really we use GiveButter in order to get students. We usually recruit through advertisement to sign up um, from our website. We embed the GiveButter form onto our website. And once they um, pay an application fee, then we use GiveButter further to have them sign up for a payment plan or uh, sign up for like language proficiency tests if they need them and anything like that. That's amazing. That's an incredible mission. And all the more kudos to you for launching that in the middle of a pandemic. That's amazing. So you mentioned previous this call that you were kind of viewing like bringing Give Butter in where PayPal was. So using it really truly to collect the fee for service, which for those of you who are watching, if you're a more traditional nonprofit, that's what we call earned revenue. So you can also write collect donations, but for you, you're really operating more from like an earned revenue perspective. And the simple collect forms have been straightforward for the people, like students that you're working with. So tell us a little bit more, like, did you start with PayPal and then make that switch? Or how did you find GiveButter navigate beginning to use GiveButter's product? Well, you know, um, the, we started with PayPal and it was always, often very glitchy. You know, we would get emails from students just saying that, hey, I've been trying to make a payment. I thought I did. It didn't go through. Um, and we would have issues with seats that they thought were reserved and they never paid. Um, and so we had to find a different payment platform. Uh, we wanted to somehow integrate PayPal into it like GiveButter does. So GiveButter really was the perfect one because, you know, students can use PayPal. They can put their debit card in. I think they can use Venmo. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I, when we embedded the GiveButter forms, we suddenly noticed that way more students were signing up and all these technical issues went away. Um, and I think it embeds quite seamlessly. You know, you can change the color to match your website. Um, and, you know, it's quite intuitive to use for people who are signing up. Um, so I believe that uh, it really did help us like raise further revenue, just the platform itself and the software itself when we embedded it into our website. That's amazing. So it just was a lot more user-friendly for you once you set that in. And like you said, we partner um, with PayPal and integrate with them. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen because I'm sure people who are following along right now are wondering, what exactly does that look like? How did you, how'd you do that? So right now we're looking at your website and there are really two different fees that you're mainly using it for, correct? So we have the application fee and training fee. Um, one of them, if you keep scrolling, you'll see is embedded right here in the format of ticketing. Can you tell everybody a little bit more about that? Because I know this is like a recent change that you've tried to make and are testing out right now. Right. So this used to be a collect form. And in the collect form, we would have a custom option for the student to have a drop down menu and select their date. But we, we're, we believe that it might be beneficial for the student to select their date in the beginning and raise their conversion rate. Um, from people who are viewing a landing page to signing up to be students. And so uh, we're trying to test this right now to see if it works. But basically, the idea is that um, 
in the the student selects which date they want and then they go on to um, further add information um, and the way it was before was that the student would just select how much money they want to pay, which was 25, and then they would add their date later on. Um, and we we believe that it might not make a big difference, but it does seem to be a little bit more like convenient for the students. It puts that idea in their head that they're buying a ticket to an event that they have to go to. Uh, mm -hmm. We noticed that some students didn't, you know, quite understand that we were expecting them to come live. Maybe they didn't read through the website entirely, but um, you know, it's telling them that hey, you have a ticket to show up at from June 7th to July. Uh, 28th from 6 to 9 p.m. Uh, that makes them feel like they have to go to something and they really have to attend all the classes if they expect to become a medical interpreter. Smart. And then I know you have a couple more pages that you've created the select a payment plan as well. Right. Sorry, go ahead. Tell more, no, tell us more about it. Uh, so this one, we really just want to give um, extended payment plans to our students because, you know, the training takes place over time um, and students often ask for, instead of a one-time payment, they obviously want it spread out. And a way we found to do that was to use a recurring payment and then cancel it once it uh, reaches a certain time. I know GiveButter is working on like creating um, automated like month by month uh, payment plans, but for now we found that this works pretty well. Uh, we just say that um, we'll, you'll have three recurring payments if they sign up for the three month payment plan. And then we make sure it's canceled um, before the fourth one is charged. I see. That's smart. So you made that more of a manual process. And then, you know, you make sure that they're aware of how that all works. Very clean and simple. And then again, um, I thought this was really unique and smart. I haven't seen this in a lot of platforms. Just kind of, again, can we have your consent? Do you understand what you're agreeing to? Yes, I understand. I thought that was really smart that you added that. Was there a reason why? Yes, because students didn't understand that they were, uh, you know, they thought it was more like a deposit almost. But no, when, you know, when they sign up, we really expect them to finish the entire thing because they're taking the seat of another student who could have, because we have a limit on the number of students per session. And this oh. is, you know, we have an entire policy form that we email them for them to sign as well. So it's kind of like just uh, the, their first time seeing it, but they're going to see it like another time in a long form where it goes into way more detail about what they're exactly they're signing up for. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then you have one more page that's kind of more drawn out explaining the application fee and they can register here as well. How did you think through kind of setting up this page? How, how have you made it work for you or be successful? Well, uh, the reason we set this one up was because uh, we thought that it might be beneficial for some students who are um, wanting to know if other people have signed up for the course to mm -hmm. see that there have been just quite a few people that have been signing up and you know wanting to become medical interpreters and we thought uh, we noticed Facebook ads are successful for that reason because you know mm -hmm. they had a hundred other students in the comments saying yeah I took this course it was great um, I'm a medical interpreter now and getting paid x money so we thought that it would it just adds this kind of social reassurance that hey this is a real thing that you'll actually become a medical interpreter uh, learn more about it and look at other talk to other people who have possibly taken it and it kind of uh, some people really need that before they want to sign up. And so I think that kind of uh, adds to that, adds that element to our sign up form. Gotcha. Yeah. It sounds like you just really tried to use all of GiveButter's features to make it as easy as possible for different types of students. So for some students, social proof might be really important. And so this type of page really matters because they can see, like you said, other people have signed up, have a little FOMO, maybe they should sign up and join them and get on there and can just simply click register. And again, you'll see that same form that was embedded into your website. So what would you say has been the secret to your success with trying some of these different features of GiveButter to um, sell your services? Any tips, tricks, lessons learned? Well, I, I think GiveButter enables you to do what it is that you do best. And therefore, you know, if you're a nonprofit that's trying to raise revenue, uh, people should want your services. You should be the expert at something. Your employees or independent contractors should be uh, experts at what they teach or whatever service they're providing. Um, and GiveButter will enable people to sign up. You know, it's it's a very intuitive platform and it basically lets you um, lets you or enables you to allow yourself to have all of these various people who uh, would benefit from your services to come to you. 
uh, that's really what it is at the end of the day. And but you know, the the ability the uh, the ability to have that is good, but the nonprofit still has to have a way of uh, wanting people to come to it. You know, people should you should have a way to distinguish yourself. Um, you know, for our training, we try to uh, have our trainers as a way to distinguish ourselves. You know, our trainers are really some of the pioneers in the interpreting field. And that's an old picture. We have a lot more trainers now. We have to update that picture. Uh, it's on our website, the new one. But the number of the trainers, they're really well known in their field and people see them and they uh, want to sign up. And, you know, I think that if you're if you have that correct mission, then Give Butter will enable you to further it. Um, but you have to make sure the strategic plan is there is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like you can't just embed these platforms into nowhere. You need to have a plan to market. Right. Yeah, definitely. I'm wondering, um, you know, you're a year in basically to this journey. What what's next? What's the future for um, using collection for fee for service or possibly donations? What do you think is next for your organization? Well, we haven't actually even tried to explore donations too much yet. We haven't really been asking for them. So that's in the future. And we're going to we're going to be focusing on that soon. Uh, we don't really have that much uh, since we're a new nonprofit. We haven't really expanded our wings yet, I should say, into all these various things. And right now we've been really focusing on fee for service and just providing services and charging for them. Um, but once we focus on donations, we'll be using Get Better for that, of course. We're really excited to try their fundraising feature. We haven't touched that yet. We've only been using uh, collect and ticket. So we know there's a lot of potential there. Um, and, you know, there's a shortage of medical interpreters in every language. And so we're, we're going to be training a lot more than what we're doing now and hopefully continue to expand because there's really the need for it, uh, especially in rare languages, but even common languages uh, in which th there's a huge need, even in Spanish, for example. Um, so we don't expect there to be a shortage of students anytime soon. Um, so we, you know, we're going to hopefully expand and give better. We'll be there in the process of that. Well, thank you so much for the incredibly important work that you're doing and for using Give Butter as you get ready to spread your wings and explore and expand and try new things this year. It is incredible to see what you've started with just at Collect. And we often told people at Give Butter, start with Collect if you're new, then build a fundraise, like you said, and then events. And you're definitely kind of following that pattern and pathway to success. And so if you're watching right now and you're thinking, I don't even know where to start. I don't know where to begin. Um, maybe try what Kevin did. Start with Collect and then build from there and see how it goes, right? So thanks for being such an inspiration um, to all of us today and for sharing your story with us, Kevin. Yep, it's fun. Uh, I will, anytime you want me to be back, I will uh, give you an update in the long future and let you know how things went. Yes, we would love that. Please come back. Thank you everyone else for following along and joining us for another success story from the Give Butter community. We will see you again next week. And to make sure that you don't miss another one, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to Give Butter's YouTube channel. Until then, happy fundraising. Bye everybody.